Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guest today is Tailspinner and Troubadour Darren Crow of the Cedar Rapids area, who is always busy around this time of year, because what is fall without spooky stories? Darren, welcome. Absolutely. Hey, this is the perfect time of year for uh, a good story to make you jump just a little bit. Or, or, or look over your shoulder into the dark and wonder what's going on behind you. As I follow your, you know, your emails and your social media posts and things like that, of course, performing arts of any kind during the pandemic is really challenging. But I do notice that as a storyteller, you are one of the performers who is able to translate at least some of your work into, you know, Zoom or, you know, Hangouts or online or things like that. And I noticed that you've been doing, you've also been getting out a little bit beyond your normal travel area with some of your work. What's been the, uh, what's been the, the most fun, the most interesting, the farthest you've been, any highlights uh, you of bet. your pandemic storytelling? <laughs> You know, the, the great bummer of the pandemic is that, yes, it, it's been hard to actually do anything in person. But on the flip side, because we have the wonders of, of Zoom and the internet, I can be telling stories along with people in Canada and England and India, and that's been pretty awesome to get to share stories and, and watch stories from people all over the world that I would never have gotten to see or hear or tell stories with. Um, this past yeah, you, weekend. Yeah, tell me yeah. about the Moonshell Festival. Oh, Moonshell is kind of awesome. For the last, oh, 19 or 20 years over in Omaha, um, the, the Nebraska Story Arts has hosted a wonderful festival called Moonshell, which is a tiny little seashell that's found uh, in the Platte River over that direction. And uh, storytellers from across the country and sometimes around the world show up here. And so it was really exciting even if it had to be virtual, to get to tell stories with folks like Megan Hicks and Tim Lowry and have people from all over the country and around the world tune in to listen to the stories. It's kind of cool. Well, the events that you have coming up for the next few weeks here in October are actually in-person events. You're going to be at the History Center, and then you've got your Morbid Curiosity show coming up uh, at the end of the month, right around Halloween. And hold up your mud. Those who are watching the video, because it's Edgar Allan Poe season. That's right. Aaron has his Poe mug that he's drinking from this morning. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so first off, you're going to be telling some stories at the History Center. And the uh, this weekend is that uh, Saturday, right? The third? That's right. And Saturday these are going to be spooky stories out of Lynn County? Absolutely. Um, last year, uh, I, I had the pleasure of getting to tell a few stories at, at their spooky Stories of Lynn County event. And so I was real excited when they called and said, could, could you do some more of those? Um, because of course, Lynn County has got all kinds of really interesting, very spooky locations. Now, the challenge for a storyteller is that Often what you get is one or two sentences. Oh my goodness, scary things have happened here. So creating a story out of that takes a certain amount of crafting and, and heavy work, but boy, is it fun to create, <laughs> I gotta say. Well, I don't want you to give any spoilers, of course, but can you tell us a few of the uh, Lynn County legends that you're gonna be bringing to life? Absolutely. Um, I'm really excited about, you may or may not know, of course, when Cedar Rapids was first laid out, one of the first things they put together was a cemetery. But as the city grew, the cemetery was in the way. So by the 1850s and early 1860s, they were moving everybody up to Oak Hill. But of course, they don't always get everybody out. And that old cemetery is underneath the Pepsi bottling plant the restore and, and those areas right in there. And okay, six, yeah, third, what is it, third for about fourth, fourth Avenue and six, seventh street, something like that. Yep. And still, when they're doing road constructions and things in that area, there are the occasional femurs and, and, and things like that that they come across. And, and there are plenty of stories of folks, say, at the Pepsi bottling plant who have gone by and gone, whoa, why did it just get super cold right there? 
Uh, One of our stories okay. is an explanation of why it gets so cold right there. Oh. <laughs> All right. Got, got another one to share? Or, absolutely. Um, Matzel Bridge uh, Natural Area, way out on the eastern side of the county, uh, of course, was the Matzel Farm for a hundred and some odd years, with, with a wonderful big old house that the chief of police in New York City built as his summer home. Um, and Matzel Bridge is the name of the park, and it's the name of a bridge across the Wapspittigan River. And if you go out to the bridge at night, park your car on the bridge, put it in neutral, and turn off the engine, it won't be long before mysterious figures begin to push the car across the bridge. And when you get to the other side and you get out, you'll look and there will be handprints in the dust on the back of your car. Oh. And I can tell you why, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Saturday, October 3rd, Spooky Legends of Lynn County. This will be outdoors at the History outdoors. Center. So bundle up, but I understand there'll be treats, hot chocolate and things like that to help everybody stay warm while, they're, while your tails are chilling them. <laughs> it should be an awful lot of fun. And um, the weather this weekend is supposed to be kind of iffy. So if the weather descends into horrible awfulness, they may move it to next weekend. Keep an eye out. And then at the end of the month, you, it's your traditional Morbid Curiosities show that you have done for many years now, portraying and telling the stories of Edgar Allan Poe. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, this is uh, we're into the second decade of, of, of doing Poe. Um, I've now lived for about eight years longer than he did. <laughs> so, um, but I, I love Poe's stories. I have since I was in, in junior high. And his stories are so evocative and, and wonderfully creepy, and some of them tremendously funny. And, and the poetry is beautiful. And his life story is such a great story. Um, and Giving Tree Theater is a wonderful setting to do this piece. And so I'm real excited to get to partner with Jamie and Andrea uh, to present this show, October 30th and 31st. So great Halloween party, too. Have a few lines or a short poem from Edgar Allan Poe to tease us for morbid <laughs> curiosities? Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some late visitor, I muttered, entreating entrance at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Of course, we all know it was nothing. It, it, it was a lot more than nothing. <laughs> and you can find the rest of it at Morbid Curiosities. So Spooky Legends of Lynn County on Saturday, October 3rd. That's at the History Center. And mm -hmm. then October 30th and 31st at the Giving Tree Theater uh, with socially distanced seating. It's Morbid Curiosities. So since, uh, you know, and since a lot of trick-or-treating is going to be a not nearly so prevalent this year. This would be a perfect thing. And tell me about and these. This is scary stuff, but uh, all you know. But it's safe to bring the kids or grandkids, right? Yes, you know your your four year old probably won't enjoy it, <laughs> but but your your older elementary kids, your your uh, middle schoolers, they will. Yes, but I I wouldn't bring the five and six year old. <laughs> <laughs> You can visit the History Center website or the uh, Giving Tree Theater website if you'd like to get tickets for either of these shows. Again, in-person shows uh, as, uh, as a part of uh, what Darren's got going uh, this fall. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. Always a pleasure to uh, dip into your imagination uh, just a little bit and uh, hear some of the background of some of the stories that you're going to tell. I hope you have uh, appropriately sized, socially distant crowds for each of the event and each of the events. And they're, they're a lot of fun. Great to talk to you, Darren. Take care. You can hear the culture crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast app. I'm Dennis Green and I'll talk to you later.